The light rays effect in After Effects allows us to add or enhance the lighting in a graphic or a photograph. So to begin, let's go back to the exercise files and let's go inside of the 02 folder inside of the chapter one folder. And we're gonna take the Steel Globe PSD file and import this into After Effects. And so you can do that by going to the file menu inside of After Effects and choosing import file, or you can simply drag the Photoshop file from your operating system right into the project panel in After Effects. And now when you import a Photoshop file into After Effects, you're gonna have a couple of options. We talked about this in the introduction videos. So inside of the Steel Globe PSD import options here, what we're gonna do is change the import from footage to composition. And I'm gonna leave merge layer styles into footage checked and then click OK. So that's gonna create a composition for us called the Steel Globe showing up here, which matches the Photoshop file name. So I'll double click on this. And in the project panel, if I toggle open this folder, we'll see all of the individual layers. So down in the timeline panel, we can see that all of the layers have been placed along the timeline. And what I'll do first is come down here and select the photo layer. So with this selected, I'll come up here to the composition window. Let's come down and set this to fit so we can see the entire composition. Next, let's go over to the effects and presets. Let's come in here and search for light rays. So I'll just type rays. And then down here under the generate group, we can see CC light rays. So to apply this effect, if I were to simply drag and drop this like we did in some of the previous videos, what would happen is the effect would get applied to the top layer, the Columbus layer. And what I wanna do is apply the effect to the photo layer. So what I'll do is click and drag this and drop it on top of the photo layer in the timeline panel. Now, if the photo layer is selected, I could also simply double click the item in the effect and presets, and that would apply it to the selected layer as well. And so in either case, we now have the light rays effect applied to the photo layer. So with this effect applied, you can see the beginnings of the effect showing up here. In the effect controls, you can see all of the default properties. So this little icon here is showing me the center point of the light rays effect. And we can also see that showing up here. So if I wanna move this, I can come in here and scrub these numbers so I can move this along the Y axis or along the X axis. Or I can come over here and grab the center point and just drag it around the image. Now you'll start to see the effect when we drag this over top of varying pixels inside of the photograph. So as I start to drag this across dark and light pixels, you'll really start to see what the effect is doing. So what I'm gonna do is come over here and drag this so that part of the center point is over top of the dark pixels here in the image. So I'll drag this to about right here. So we'll leave that for the moment. Let's come back over to the effect controls and let's come in here and start changing some properties. So first is intensity. If I grab this and drag this down, this will decrease the power of the effect. And then if I come up here and increase this, this will increase the power of the effect. So I'll leave this back near 100. Next, we talked about the center point. Next, we're gonna take a look at the radius. So the radius is set to 40 by default. So to understand how this effect works, what it really does is it basically kind of broadcasts the pixels from the layer that the effect is being applied to at you. So to see this, if I come in here and increase the radius, depending on the size of the image, you can see what it's really doing is taking the image and just pushing all of those pixels back out at us. And so if we apply this effect to a light area of a photo, it'll really look like there is light shining or reflecting off of the pixels. And then if I go the other way and decrease the radius, we'll see a very small effect happening from those pixels being pushed out. So for the radius, I'm gonna bring this down to around 34. Next is the warp softness. Let me increase the radius a little bit so we can see what happens here. The warp softness will basically blend all of the rays together so if I increase this, just like increasing the radius, we can see more of the original image. But if I bring this down, we'll see all of those rays sort of blending into each other. So I'm gonna leave the warp softness down at zero. I'll bring the radius back down to around 34. And next I'll come down here and change the shape. The default is round, but if I come in here and select a square, the shape that is broadcasting out these pixels or creating the light ray effect is now gonna be a square which then means the direction option becomes available. And then I can come in here and rotate the square around. So this will give me the ability to sort of move the rays around and control how the light is shining off the globe. So now I'm gonna come back up here and I'm gonna move the X axis a little bit and then the Y axis. What I'm looking for is to create some shadows and highlights to reflect off of the globe. 
Now, once I have this in place, I can come down here and if I uncheck color from source, what this means is I can pick a light color. By default, color from source means it's gonna take the pixels from the image and use those colors, which is what you're gonna to wanna to use most of the time. But if you did wanna pick a specific color, you can uncheck this, come down here and click on the color swatch and you could pick a color. So we could make the light red, for example. Then I'll come up here and increase the intensity and you can see that the square rotated shape is now being created from red instead of the pixels from the image. So I'm going to hit undo a few times here, hitting Command or Control Z, getting back to where we were before. Now to finalize this light ray, I'm gonna come up here to the intensity and I'm gonna bring this way up. I'm gonna bring this up to about 190, brings up to about right here. I'm gonna come in here and grab the center point. Again, I'm gonna move this around. Let me re-enable color from source. Move this to about right here. Come over here and play with the direction. I wanna get some interesting highlights uh, moving across the text in the background. And then once I have the effect the way I like it, I'm gonna come back to the effect controls and I'm gonna select the CC light rays effect. And on the Mac, I'll hit Command D or on Windows, I'll hit Control D and I'm gonna duplicate this effect. I can apply this effect multiple times to the image. So I'll close up the first effect. In the second effect, I'm gonna bring the intensity down a lot. I'm gonna bring the radius down a lot. I'm gonna select the center point. And what I wanna do is move this to another area of the image. And I wanna pick a spot where the sun is actually hitting the sculpture. So maybe I'll put one right over here. Maybe increase this just a little bit. Rotate this around just a little bit, just to get a nice little highlight. And then one more time, I'll select this effect, Command or Control D, duplicate that again, and then I'll move this to a third spot, maybe over here. I'll bring the intensity down a little bit and maybe rotate this a little as well. Now you can try this effect with any image or photograph to see what kind of dramatic lighting effects you can create. And so for my final project, I added levels and hue saturation in addition to the light rays to create this final image.